company is coming are words that you have probably heard from your parents when you were a kid. Or if you are like me, they were words that signaled it was time to start cleaning up. Now they are literally words I say out loud to myself, sometimes to no one other than to myself, if I'm frantically scurrying around the house to clean before friends or family come over for a meal, wine, or even just a quick drop by. If it's my parents, I'm very meticulous in making sure things are putting away, put away, bed is made, floors are mopped, a light dusting may be in order. Everything done before that doorbell rings and guests arrive to the party. At the Pace Center for Campus Ministry across Monroe Park, Wednesdays during the school semester feel like that similar scramble. Each Wednesday, the Pace Center hosts a program called Stories and Lunch. And the purpose of Stories and Lunch is to share in a home-cooked meal provided by churches or local community groups to sit around the table with one another, share in a common topic that people have provided the food. We try to keep the themes pretty vague so that if you have a travel story, for example, you can talk about visiting a friend close by or maybe someone sitting next to you has an extravagant story about visiting another country. Either way, it's a time to share your story and a time to share with one another and to meet new people. So while the food aspect of is important, the community building that happens is even more valuable. Before our weekly Wednesday meal, volunteer students sign up to set up real plates, real silverware, cloth, napkins, and pitchers of water at each of the tables in order to create a culture of sharing with one another rather than dining and dashing. 11 a.m. rolls around every Wednesday, and I have that same light moment of panic. Company is coming, starts to set in. Clean up at the end of the meal can have a similar feeling of anxiety. Will anyone stay to wash the dishes, or will it be the staff that's in the back rolling up our sleeves to wash 60 plates, silverware, and cups? Well, guess what? <laughs> I'm happy to report in the two and a half years that I have served at Pace, a complete meal for college students from beginning to end has been served with minimal to no disruption. Of course, there is always the food is a few minutes late, but the hosting moment of panic before the 60 students descend on pace, reliant on this meal served and friendships made, it always works itself out in the end. In today's gospel reading, company is coming. And it's Philip who is panicking. And if he's not panicking, he probably should be panicking because it's not just 60 people, it's 5,000. So our story starts off with Jesus having a teaching moment of his own. A crowd is approaching, and he asks the disciples, not how will we feed all of these people? Instead, where will we buy food? And he does something interesting. He has a moment of teaching with them by testing them. So we learn from the disciples that day that walking with Christ is not always easy. Instead, it can involve a slight moment of panic. But in that testing, there is growth. Next, what happens is what many of my college students would say that the math does not be mathing. Or if you're older, you can say, Things are not adding up. Five barley loaves and two fish is what presumably feeds the whole crowd. How? And how are there still leftovers in the end? And here's the miracle of this story, or the sign, as the gospel calls it. Jesus does not just wave a magic wand. Instead, the unnamed boy, who could not have been any older than, say, 12 years old, is brave enough to step forward. Step forward among those 5,000 people willing enough to share 
which in turn inspires others to share as well and bring their gifts forward. The disciples with the gift of organizing, Jesus with the gift of a gracious host blessing the meal, and the gift of each of the 5,000 being fed. I often, even from a young age, found myself curious about what it might be like to be in the crowd that day. Here is someone who is gaining a following, who does not push the crowd away, but encourages them to come closer. What did the people see? What did they hear? In one of the previous churches I served, there was a picture that one of the professional photographers from the congregation had taken on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. You can tell in the photo that a storm is clearing away and light is shining down through the sky that's purple and blue, deep purple, deep blue. And then this deep green bank that looks like a hill, like an amphitheater, and you can just imagine people standing there, laughing, children playing in the sea, perfectly sea foam colored, adults removing their sandals to get their feet wet too, neighbors greeting one another and catching up, and food, food everywhere, a true foretaste of the kingdom of God. Earlier this summer or late spring, I attended the opening game of the Richmond Ivy, which is Richmond's new semi-professional women's soccer team that plays at City Stadium. And the opening match sold out 6,000 people in attendance. It was exhilarating. I saw people that I knew. I saw friends that I was cheering on the team with. I saw people waving flags. And there was a bring your own drum drumming section. It was electric. And while the feeding of the 5,000 was probably not as exciting as a competitive soccer match, I bet it had to feel that same electric and exciting energy of community coming together. There's an element of this story that is about utilizing gifts. And if you have spent any time at the Pace Center, you know that we like to talk about gifts. And while I'm not talking about physical gifts that you say you give at Christmas time or birthdays, I'm talking about gifts of the head, gifts of the hands, and gifts of the heart. And because today's gospel has a reference to fish, let's use fly fishing as our example of gifts of the head, hands, and heart. Gifts of your head would be something that you have so much knowledge about. Maybe you know every top fly fishing destination in the whole world, or you know a list of the best fly fishermen who are out there. I wonder if you have a gift of your head that you know so much about. Gift, gifts of your hands, you can teach someone how to fly fish. Not everyone is a gifted teacher, but in this ca case, maybe there is something that you can teach to others about fly fishing. Is there something that you can think of that you can teach to others? Finally, gifts of your heart. What is something that you are so passionate about? Maybe you believe the world would be a better place if everyone just went to the river every day to fly fish. And right there, that feeling is the heart of our gospel story. If just everyone had something to eat, the world would be a better place. The words of the serenity prayer are what come to mind when I think about how we can live into this scripture and take it out from this place and put it into our lives. God, give me the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. We can't feed every person in the world. We can't house every unhoused person. We alone cannot end wars. We cannot wave a magic wand and hope that everyone will be kind to one another in a contentious election cycle. I, more than anyone, need to hear all of these words this week. 
but we can find our corners, our pockets of the world, our corners of the world to step courageously, bravely, like the unnamed boy into, using our prophetic voice to find the areas of the world that need just that little bit of extra healing, that little bit of extra love that we are able to give. What if the miracle of this story is not that the things were magically multiplied, but instead all were willing to give some? People were willing to share their gifts with one another by one person sharing their gifts enabling another person to share those, and so on and so on, in a true pass-it-on game, if you will. So the miracle does not become, look at all this food we have to eat, but instead look at all of this community that is being formed. Our scripture today is a foundational scripture of what ACE and what our churches are built on, a foretaste of the kingdom of God like a great feast in heaven all gather and share with one another their gifts, their hopes, their dreams around food. And it is foundational to what we are seeing today. Look around today, the tech director here so that we have a live stream, the musicians here to provide us music, the nursery staff here to welcome children, flowers, shining examples, brass. Your presence here is a gift so that you can continue to build community and make the world a better place. What if a dream is not so silly, but instead is fodder for the bigger movement? Companies coming, and there is inevitably going to be something that goes wrong, or a moment of panic before everyone arrives. But in the chaos, there is hope, and companies coming, and I hope that they're bringing something good to share with everyone. Amen.